Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, Real Mushrooms Fun Gal Friday. My name is Joni Camlet, and I'm the Director of Veterinary Education and Outreach for Real Mushrooms. And I'm so honored today to be uh, chatting with uh, Julianne Lee. Many of you know her uh, as the founder of Adored Beast. And I have to say, I've been using Adored Beast products with my little dog Scruffy for a couple of years now. And um, I can honestly say that one of your products, the gut soothe, like turned her around um, when she was dealing with a very serious uh, GI issue. So uh, thank you. And, but she's also, she's a mushroom nerd like me. <laughs> and so, uh, and I don't think a lot of you uh, know her full uh, history. So I'm going to read it because it's quite impressive. Um, Julianne Lee is a uh, uh, registered with the Can uh, Canadian Society of Homeopaths, and she also has a diploma in classical homeopathy, which is a really big deal. Um, it's uh, years and years of study. Um, she also founded Ca Canada's first licensed strictly holistic veterinary clinic. She developed and taught a three-year postgraduate program for veterinarians at the College of Animal Homeopathic Medicine. Over the last 25 years, Julianne has shared her expertise with various esteemed organizations. She presented lectures for the American Homeopathic Veterinary Association on Homeopathy and Functional Pathology, the British Homeopathic Veterinary Surgeons Association on Treating Chronic Disease, the Canadian Society of Homeopaths on Clinical Comparisons of the Treatment of Humans to Animals for the, is it the pay? Veterinary University on the Gut Microbiome, and much more. PEI. PEI, okay. <laughs> Within her practice, uh, Julianne was a leader, or is a leader, in using medicinal mushrooms for her cancer patients. She founded the Microbiome, a medicinal mushroom research forest in Nova Scotia, where she grows and does research looking at the, meta the medicinal value of mushrooms grown, steeped in the diverse wisdom of bacteria from the forest floor. Her focus is working with nature as our teacher, rather than attempting to fit nature into the constraints of conventional Western practices, letting nature take the lead in her research. Growing up helping in her mother's animal rescue, planted seeds early on of what would rapidly and passionately grow into Julianne Lee's life purpose, a deep caring and protection for all animals, their health and the planet while educating the public and veterinarians. Uh, Julie is the founder, uh, the visionary founder of Dored Beast Apothecary, where she passionately formulates products and is in her fifth year of canine cancer research at Dal Dalhousie University. Did I get that one right? Right. <laughs> so welcome, uh, welcome, Julianne. Uh, I, you know, I got goosebumps reading about your. Um, just your vision and your life purpose. I, I find you um, so very inspiring. And, you know, I'm so curious, uh, how did you become interested in therapeutic mushrooms? Um, well, it's a it's an interesting story in a way because I opened um, my, vet, my, my holistic veterinary hospital. And as you can imagine, back in 1997, um, I was bombarded with end stage patients. So not a lot of new patients wondering about, you know, how do we move forward in more of a holistic way? It was much, if you can't help my dog, my cat, my horse, my whatever, um, we have to euthanize them. Yeah. So lots and lots of chronic disease and tons of cancer, like tons. So I would say the first two years of my practice, three years of my practice was really geared into, into intensely sick animals. Yeah. And I had a lot of people coming to me, including vet veterinarians, saying, oh, I've heard about shark cartilage. You know, shark cartilage is supposed to be the, you know, the, the thing for cancer and like the, the latest breakthrough in, in cancer treatment and cancer prevention and whatever. And to me, there, that was just a no, no starter. That was just a no go. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't think of, um, torturing an animal in order to heal another animal. It just, to mm -hmm. me, it was a complete oxymoron. I'm a real energetic person. And I believe that what we consume has energy and whether that's food, whether that's medicinal mushrooms, it doesn't really matter. I feel like there's energy in, mm -hmm. in, in everything that we consume. 
So I just couldn't do that. I, I have a very strong philosophy as above all, do no harm. Mm-hmm. And that and that translate in, translates into everything. Mm-hmm. So, you know, my patients, the pet parents, the planet, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I had to figure out what was I going to do? So mm-hmm. how was I going to support these these patients and not use things that I didn't believe in? So I started really digging into medicinal mushrooms and I was so lucky because one of the veterinarians that were, that was actually, I was mentoring at the time, brilliant man. um, He had a very good friend that was a traditional Chinese medicine doctor from China. Okay. And he was coming over to spend a year in Vancouver with him. And I got to train exclusively with him about medicinal mushrooms. And that was his forte. Yeah. So it was, you know, the, the translation piece was a bit difficult, but how I learned about mushrooms was very different and very not conventionally sciencey oriented. I was taught with each mushroom. What did they look like? What was their energy? Hmm. What did they what would what would this mushroom be doing if I just looked at this mushroom? What does it look like? You know, right. does it look like it's consuming something? Does it look like a tumor? Does it look like a cell that's 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 unhealthy? Does it look like it was very we call it a doctor and a signature. signatures, yeah. Right. So I was steeped in that for the longest time. So I really dug into it. I used medicinal mushrooms since 1998. And, um, and, you know, they're a passion for me. So then when I, when I, um, and I taught about them at, at, with, Mm -hmm. to vet, to veterinarians. And, um, so I, and I didn't just use them for cancer. I used them for Mm -hmm. chronic disease. I used them for Mm -hmm. prevention. I used them just as sort of a rotational medicinal, um, uh, medicine to use to, to help prevent chronic disease. So when I decided that I was going to do medicinal mushrooms in my, at my, um, my company now, which is adored beast apothecary, uh, I couldn't find any that I felt resonated with my philosophy. Right. So that's how I got into them, but I'll, I'll let you ask me more questions rather than just talking. (laughs) Yeah, no, I, I love that. And, you know, I'm, of course, you know, the tradition of mushrooms in China goes back so many thousands of years. And so to learn from, you know, to learn about them in that way and uh, in a way that <clears throat> really resonates with the energetic way that you think or learn thinking anyway, uh, yeah. it, it sounds like it was really meant to be. Was, was there a particular case like in the in that early time that like, you know, that mushrooms really turned around that's that that you that you can recall? Um, cases I imagine. Yeah. I mean, I think the two main modalities that I used, mm-hmm. I should say three, my, my sort of like triage of, of, uh, treatment is homeopathy, right. the microbiome and medicinal mushrooms. Right. So it's sort of, those are the, my, those are my three like stable foundations. Yeah. And, um, I remember doing this dog and, and when I, when I like, I've lectured at a lot of veterinary, um, mm-hmm. conferences and the one that I did about the pathology with the, the homeopathic group in, in, in the U S I showed a lot of actual, you know, blood work and lots and lots of before and after and during, uh, ultrasounds and x-rays and stuff. And I would say that the two, like abdominal tumors, mm. um, tumors in the intestinal tract, yeah. uh, hemangiosarcoma, which we all know is, is, is a, is a big one. Um, those three, I, I, I couldn't even find one that, well, maybe, okay, I'll use this one. We, I had a, a, a large, uh, Akita cross come mm. in to me and she had been diagnosed with hemangiosarcoma and diagnosed from a really reputable, it's yeah. called Dan West, huge okay. specialty clinic. Yeah. And she was uh, 11 years old. She was a big dog. And they had decided that they weren't going to do surgery wow. and they weren't going to, yeah. because, you know, hemagio often can, you know, metastasize to the lungs like, like sure. that. Yeah. 
So, um, so I, I decided, they decided that they just wanted to have quality of life. Right. So they brought her to me and I started working with her and literally about nine months later, she was just thriving, like thriving, but her abdomen was getting bigger and bigger. Mm-hmm. And so I said, I'd like you to take them back. I want you to go back to the internal medicine and oncology specialists at this thing. I want them to redo the ultrasound. I want to see what's going on. Right. So they did. And sure enough, the tumor was really big, like really big. She had lost some weight because she was running and doing right. all of this amazing stuff. And they were like, oh, this, this, this has to be benign. We must have made a mistake. Yeah. There's no way that this is this is uh, malignant, right? This must have been, this must be benign. We should do surgery and remove her spleen. So they came back to me and I said, yeah, now I would do it. Nine right. months ago, I wouldn't have done it. Let's, yeah. let's do it. Right. You know, and I, and I really highly respect that, that, that clinic. So they did the surgery and they sent it off for a histiopathology, like the mm-hmm. entire spleen. Sure. And it came back that it was, wow. <laughs> And um, we kept treating her through the whole yeah. thing and they were amazing with me and would let allowed me to do continue the integration that's of great. everything. Yeah. And that dog lived till she was 14. Oh my gosh. That's so amazing. With a diagnosis that it was in fact a magiosarcoma and never spread to her lungs. That's not even what she died from. We euthanized her because her arthritis got really bad. That is amazing. And so you were using your holy trinity, your holy trinity of the, uh, the mushrooms, uh, the, uh, the oh, microbiome. Yeah, the and microbiome. Yeah. Now, were you, uh, I'm curious about what mushrooms you were using in that case. Was it turkey tail or were you Predomin- using? Predominantly turkey tail, but I also use chaga. Okay. So I, I rotate, I'm a big rotational person. Yep. Wow. Um, I rotated those two mm-hmm. and I got them from an amazing, um, you know, wildcrafted source yep. and it, it, yeah. So, I mean, and that's what I did in my clinic all the time. Like I had pickers, I knew pickers, right? Like I, I, Vancouver's an incredibly, yeah. you know, connected community when it comes to stuff like that. Yeah. So, you know, when I decided that I was going to, you know, start doing them with, with adored beast, you know, I looked and I thought, and I looked and I thought, but by then I've done, I've done 25 years of microbiology. Right. Right. So my, one of my loves is bacteria. Like I love bacteria and I know that sounds really <laughs> weird, but um, you know, we're nerds. So it uh, doesn't sound weird. I'm always taught bacteria is bad. Bacteria kills you. Bacteria is not good. I'm like, without bacteria, we wouldn't have. We're made bacteria. of bacteria and fungus exactly. and mold. And yeah. And you know this now, 25 years ago, people exactly. thought I flew in on a broom when I would yeah. talk like that. Yeah. So, so anyways, I decided, I wonder, you know, I did this massive shift because I've been in the supplement healthcare industry for a very long time now. Yeah. And I am a science nerd and I'm doing, you know, cancer research and I do microbiology research and blah, 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 blah. But I feel like for me, like I, first of all, and this is the honest truth, I have zero judgment about anything. And I feel like there are so many I think energy is about everything and intention is about everything. Mm -hmm. And if people are growing medicinal mushrooms, I don't care how they're growing. If that intention is there, Mm -hmm. I feel like the wisdom and the the connection and the communication is massive. For me, I am like, all right, I am, I am so not putting anything in a box, right? Mm -hmm. I am going to take nature's call. I am going to learn from nature. I'm going to get mother nature to drum this wisdom into my head. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try and be in nature and not go into my science brain. I want to see what happens. So instead of growing them, like everyone told us to grow them, we did a, a research project in this forest that we grew them in so many different ways you have no idea we have like this like this research lab in this forest where Mm -hmm. we go okay we're gonna we're gonna place you here we're gonna grow you here we're going to allow you this is what we're gonna do or and this is what we're gonna do on this wood and this is what we're gonna do in this ground and this is what we're gonna do with this canopy and this is what like canopy means yeah yeah everything and then we're and then we were like and then you tell us you tell us where you want to be what's your, you know, what's your deal? Like, where yeah. are you happiest? 
Yeah. Where are you? And then I watched animals and birds and, you know, it, it, it's been fascinating for me. It's just been fascinating because they tell us. It's like, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not growing here. I don't like it here. Yeah. I'm going to go nuts and grow over here. And I'm actually going to grow over here in all the different times that you told me I couldn't grow. Yeah. Like, yeah. Don't tell me how I'm going to grow because I'm going to. Yeah, this is so. Like, I love this so much, uh, Julie. And you know, like you, you're speaking to my. You're speaking the energy language that I love, and it's interesting because, like, my background is all energy medicine uh, before, but I also, you know, I work for a company that's very science based, science backed. Yeah. You know, um, we, you know, one of the things I love about us is the standardization of our products and this and that. And, you know, what I love is that I can listen to you and be 100% in line with what you're thinking that, that, that both, both ways of growing mushrooms can be, can be, can be good. You know what I mean? There's so many different modalities. There's so many different ways to grow mushrooms. I also believe that intention is so very important um, in everything that you do and that there's energy in everything. So, you know, I just love hearing. Energy and wisdom, right? Like I just did a lecture last night about wisdom and it's like, it's, it's like, you know, when something for me, whether it's my food, whether it's my hay that I'm feeding my horses, whether it's the grass that the cows are eating that I'm feeding my dogs and my cats, it doesn't matter for me bacteria equals knowledge and information and wisdom. Yes. Right? Yeah. So, so it translates so much more like, like when, when you eat something that's been growing in a diverse bacterial setting, mm-hmm. yep. that bacteria that you're consuming is, right. is communicating with your gut microbiome. Then that's exactly. communicating to your heart. That's communicating right. to your brain. And that is downloading information that's wisdom so i coined this frame is a little bit that we're bombarded or we're drowning in information but we're starving for understanding i love it yeah that's i said that once and my girl my my pa was like oh my god i gotta write that down i didn't even know like you know just came from that because that's that's how i honestly felt and and i feel like part of that is our inability to allow that wisdom to come from bacteria in our mm-hmm. food, bacteria yeah. in our mushrooms, bacteria yep. that put stick in our hands in dirt. Ba- yep. It doesn't matter, right? Like healthy yep. bacteria. Because yep. I do think that the bacteria is educated through the mycelium, right? Exactly. And the communication of the mycelium yep. in the ground or in the logs or in the wherever, when that mycelium is communicating and understanding and moving within that bacteria. Exactly. Consume that you're consuming a a piece of wisdom that you can't get from science ever. And we never will be able to ever. Right. And, and because it's, it, it, it's downloaded. I mean that, and I don't, I'm not trying to be weird about that. I don't, I don't mean that like, Oh, it's down. No, I, I completely yeah. agree. I mean, it's what do they call it? The wood wide web. And, you know, you were going, you were talking about bacteria and 25 years ago, they looked at you like you had three heads. Well, you know, we're, of course we share DNA with kingdom fungi, like you, you know, uh, animals and, and fungi share about 35% of our DNA, but they didn't even discover that until the nineties. So, you know, or, all of this information is new. And, yeah. Or plant yeah. intelligence, right? Like my grandma was talking to me about plant intelligence when I was five, exactly. you know, she used to, she used to plant chamomile and different other, com- we yeah. call it companion planting now, uh, along with her herbs and her vegetables. Right. And I remember saying to her, like, you know, why, you know, why, why did we do this? And she learned from her grandma. And my grandma was 102 when she died and she was, she died yeah. 20 years ago. So that's a long time ago. Yeah. And, and she said, because there's trauma in life. Mm. And I said, well, and I didn't understand what she meant. And she's like, Bec- these plants soothe the other plants when, yes. when, you know, there's too much rain or there's too much sun or there's drought or even harvesting time. It, it supports the family. It supports their community. It supports, she didn't say community back then, but you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what it translates into. Yeah. Um, and, and people thought I was nuts when I would talk about plant intelligence. <laughs> 
I literally thought, oh my God, like she is seriously nuts. Yeah. Until now with David Suzuki and all kinds of stuff, we've, we've, we know that they do. They a hundred percent do. And, and also like, you know, I, I hear this over and over again, like I'm living in rural Virginia and there's like, there's snakes and there's chiggers and all kinds of like, you know, poison ivy and everything. And normally, you know, what I keep being told is the antidote is growing very nearby. Like if there's something that, you know, if there's something that's a poison generally in nature, the antidote is going to be very close. Do you, do you agree? Oh, 100%. Yeah. As long as that antidote hasn't been, hasn't been um, completely eradicated because it was considered a weed, yeah. right? Which is kind of the same thing. That's the same bridge, right? So, yeah. so for me, there is no enemies, there is no enemies. And if we start deciding, you know, E. coli is our enemy. Right. Cancer is our enemy. Yeah. You know, rattlesnakes are our enemy. The gray wolf is our enemy. Yeah. We, If we choose what our enemy is and we eradicate those, it's just a domino effect. Yeah. Right. Or that weed is our enemy or this, whatever. We are, we are completely imbalancing yeah. nature's diversity. Exactly. And we are going to be in big trouble because of that, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> yeah. So I, I have a, I know I'm supposed to stick to mushrooms, but it's so fascinating to talk to you. What about non-natives though? What about the weeds? Like right now I'm looking, you know, I have this, I have five acres and I'm looking at, you know, I have this, you know, I'm looking at the mullein that's growing out there, which is wonderful, which is semi non-native, but then there's other like non-native plants and weeds that are kind of taking over the natives. Like, how do you, okay. So in terms with that, so I, I'm, I'm dealing with that right now on my hay fields, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody's like, oh, just plow them under. It's like, I'm not, I don't, I believe in no-till. I believe in a lot of different things. And I believe in the power mm -hmm. of plants, right? Yeah. So, so for me and something like that, the reason that all of those things are there is because we don't have, we've destroyed our yeah. competitive right. plant weeds, right. our plants, right? So the best thing to do is look at what is, in that topography naturally, what grows really well and what's going to compete with that plant. And foster that. Yeah. From the perspective of, you know, is it a deep growing plant? So then you got to put a plant, a native plant in that grows deeper and then it chokes out the water and then that plant dies or chokes out the sun and that plant dies. It, they know it knows what to do. Yeah. Yeah. We just yeah. need to be like, okay, well, nature knows what to do. What would have been there before? Right. Let's take a look at that and let's replant. Let's bring the diversity back in and it will take over. It will, it will know how to take over. Thank you. I know I squeaked in a non mushroom question, but now I'm going to move. We're going to move back to mushrooms. Okay. Okay. So what do you look for in a quality mushroom product? Um, this thing is hanging out and it's driving me crazy. <laughs> uh, um, an equality mushroom. Well, you know, depends on which way you're swinging, right? So yeah. if you're exactly what you said, yeah. If you're someone whose philosophy you don't feel comfortable unless it's science based in a Western conventional world science, because there's lots of science yeah. that isn't Western, yeah. you know, like acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine right. is not based on science, right? based on their yeah. wisdom, which is like their science. Right. Yeah. So so it depends. But if you're someone that feels safe and this is a big one, right? If you feel safer and more connected to looking at something that's been standardized, right? Right. Like, like your company. Yeah. Then that's what I would say to people right. look for. Yeah. Right. For me and my philosophy and a lot of my followers, yeah. they look at, at, for, for me, when I'm planting my mushrooms or yeah. I'm, I'm growing my mushrooms, I am. I am also creating my own spores. Yeah. Right. So not, I'm not, I'm not purchasing mm -hmm. mycelium. I'm actually starting now to, to grow my own mm -hmm. and allow it to become more resilient and more resilient and stronger. And, 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 and I, and that makes me really happy Yeah. because I feel like that's what we're lacking. Right. I feel our bodies and our animals are lacking resiliency. 
because of the sterilization of our food, because of the drugs that we were giving them or us ourselves, because of environmental pollution, we have to become more resilient. Yeah. Right. We have to learn, our bodies have to learn how to support itself yeah. or our animal's body. It's their self. Yeah. With the insult that we're getting now. Yeah. And to do that, we need to become resilient to what's going on around us. So for me, I get super excited when I'm doing something and I see that, that resiliency, yeah. right? Like I, I, sure. I, I watch it, but yeah. don't, you know, I, I, I see, oh my gosh, it grows through mold. It grows through yeah. bugs. It grows through too wet. It grows through too dry. It goes it's like, holy yeah, girl, this thing yeah. is resilient. Yeah. So, the resiliency piece is important for me. Um, I'm an environmental mama bear. <laughs> so, so for me, it's, it's like, how is it being grown and is it affecting negatively the environment? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't like to put anything in my body or my animal's bodies or my pay or my client's bodies or my customer's bodies that are, that is, that has an energy of not actually giving back to nature, but just taking, or in fact, hurting nature, yeah. being detrimental to nature because of that energy level. Yeah. It doesn't make sense that you're going to give something that's coming from nature that, 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 that she graciously gives to us mm -hmm. to heal us. Yeah. But we're going to do it in a way that destroys her. Yeah. It's just such an oxymoron for me. Right. So for me, when I'm looking for medicinal mushrooms, that's my goal. And that's part of my project for like my medicinal mushrooms is also a huge environmental project. So my goal is to rewild all the clear cuts yes. and be able to produce something financially that people won't just, you know, arbitrarily regrow the same, you know, the same singular tree, which is just right. so bad for everything. And then cut it down in 15 years again. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's also an environmental project to mm -hmm. start producing forests and saving forests um, from from clear cutting. I, so, I love that. And what is the name of that forest project? The, the it's, called, it's called Mycobiome. So myco like mushrooms, but then biome like okay. gut biome. So it's awesome. called Mycobiome, and that's what we're doing. We're trying to reestablish the floor, the forest bed, so right. that the mycelium can communicate with the trees and can start to exponentially, you know, rebuild and rewild these forests. And it's, it's called, it's the forest path project. Is that, is. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. That, that was the name that I was, that I was looking for that. I just, I just, I love that. And unfortunately we're running out of time. I do. Know. Have, um, so any, um, do you find mushrooms are a safe addition to, to most protocols, like any contraindications that you're, that you find? Absolutely none. Yeah, I, none. I, I would agree. I, I have, you know, like I said, like I had, I've worked with more than 35,000 animals in my career at my, at my clinics. Yeah. And, you know, homeopathy, gut, and that's probably those three, the reason I use those three right. is because I'm never worried about contraindications yes. and I'm never worried about, doesn't mean that eventually with all the drugs that are, that yeah. are coming on the market that you don't stay on top of that as a, as a consumer, either as a pet parent or, you know, you're, if you're, if you're taking them yeah. yourself, you know, you got to stay on top because it's not the mushrooms that are going to be changing, right. The drugs that are going to be changing. Exactly. Right. So, yeah. so, you know, you want to stay on top of things, but absolutely not yeah. from a perspective of it being, um, you know, safe, it's one of the, to me, it's one of the safest things. I agree. It's, they're basically functional foods they and, are. you know, and therapeutic, uh, you know, therapeutic well, medicines. Um, what mushrooms are in your protocol? Uh, right now it's chaga and turkey tail, but we are about to harvest um, reishi and lion's mane. And we have an amazing um, uh, mataki is coming. Nice. So, so all kinds of things. Yeah. yeah. We were, you know, we, we worked methodically, yeah. you know, to be sure that we weren't, you know, taking on too much and not being able to really be present right. with each species. 
Yes. To listen to them and hear what they need. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. Lion's mane is my, lion's mane and tremella are my favorite mushrooms by yeah. far. Um, yeah. And we're about to release a nice uh, maitake, a single maitake product that I'm very excited about as well. Apparently it's really tasty in a tea. Oh, cool. Oh, so nice. nice. Um, so we've, we've got an event coming up uh, this weekend, uh, tomorrow. Uh, I know um, uh, I'm getting ready to fly out there and uh, you're gonna be there too uh, at the Thrive Pet Event, which is in Newport Beach, California uh, on September 30th and October 1st. Uh, and I hear it's sold out. So that's exciting. Very and, exciting. Um, yeah, yeah. Very so. exciting. It's going to be a really, really amazing group of people and a really, really strong, connected, um, you know, I, again, I'm going to use the word energy. It's, it's, yeah. going, to be, it's going to be lovely. It's I going to be it. incredible. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm really, really looking forward to it. And um, gosh, I wish I could talk to you forever, uh, Julianne. Talk I, again, I, don't worry. <laughs> back. We'll have to do a part two because I just, like I said, I'm so fascinated with um, how you look, how you look at the world from your energetic perspective and from this place of really doing no harm. And um, yeah, I just, I have a great, a great admiration for what you're doing. And, uh, and also I admire your you're understanding that it's like different strokes for different folks. Like we can all, you know, that's what I love about, about mushrooms. There's just so many ways to utilize mushrooms. There's so many, you know, certain, certain ways are going to work for some people and other ways for well, others. Uh, that piece about not doing harm. Yeah. It, it translates into not dissing people. Exactly. Right? And because that's harmful, yes. right? Like we have to stick together as a yeah. holistic alternative movement we have to we have to have each other's backs absolutely not be condemning others yeah. you know the only thing where i kind of draw the line a little bit is in the ethics around the planet yeah right like i really really am hoping that more and more and more people will move into that space yeah. of you know if we're going to take from nature we either have to make sure that we're not harming her like for, they, no people don't have to do what i do which is like give back Right. Yeah. I don't just not harm, but I try really hard to give back. Right. I don't expect people to be like that. Yeah. I'm a bit weird when it comes to that. But but from a perspective of you're special, you're not weird. <laughs> a, a respect and an admiration and a gratitude. Thank yeah. you so much for yeah. allowing this gift to come to us so that we can heal our animals and ourselves and whatever. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm hoping that that's going to eventually translate into people being way more paying, especially consumers, like paying more attention. Like, how did this grow? And exactly. you know, is it environmentally? Because when it says sustainable, it means nothing. Yeah, right. It's not sustainability does not mean that it supports right. the environment. Right? right. And people don't understand that sometimes. But do no harm is not slagging each other, right? right? It's not it's not saying you're wrong by wanting to have science or you're wrong by wanting to have, you know, something more natural. No, nothing is wrong when you're collaborating and supporting exactly. a better world. Well, that's what Fungal Fridays is all about, just supporting the enthusiastic use of mushrooms and mushroom awesome. education, mushroom usage. Um, yeah you know, just spreading the, uh, spreading the spores, you know, uh, yeah. so, <laughs> I love the name. You, you are, you are now part of our mycelial family. Uh, yes. and, and, uh, and thank you again so much. And, um, I will see you this weekend. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Again, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you. Take care.